You could try to play, but you're never gonna be me Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy Bloody hands stain from the people who deceive me Muddy hands break through the chains, go free me Looking for change, looking for pain Pulling a mob, pushing a train I'll never stop, stick to a lane Pick up the pieces and go rearrange, yeah. I'll be the best above all the rest, put me to the test yeah. Expect nothing less, you check as I'm chess What's happening next, yeah. Say hey everyone, welcome into another edition of Say Hey Plays. My name is Jose Bouquet. Alongside me is the Doc, the Spin Doc, the master of the K-Prop. Doc, it's nice to see you as always. We have an interesting situation in this first game that we're going to chat about here. Game 3, I was about to say Game 2, but Game 3 of the NLDS Braves Phillies. And as you can see on the screen... As of recording, we've got no official word on starter for the Atlanta Braves. And this was kind of the question mark going into the series. What are we going to do with Strider or Morton? Strider or Morton? Strider or Morton? And that continues to be the question, you know. No official word as of right now. We'll see. Doc, do you have a guess? Do you have any prediction? You know, um, I – if I had to guess, I would probably lean Morton because of his experience. Uh, if you pitch Strider, then you run the risk. You run a real risk of using up your bullpen when you play in close proximity. Strider is obviously, as we know, he's an incredible strikeout pitcher. He's got two pitches, but he just throws his, his, his slider is just absolutely wicked. But he does throw a lot of pitches. And so when you're in a playoff series, despite the fact that you have your whole bullpen typically available, uh, remember in game one, because Freed struggled, they did use uh, almost six innings of bullpen in that game. They used a few relievers last game. So it, it's, it's a, for me, if I was managing the Braves, I would probably go Morton and I would actually be ready uh, to uh, like, like you could even bring Strider in, uh, out of the pen if you really needed to in a certain spot for an inning or two. But Morton has experience. Um, he's been there before. He is has been pretty lights out uh, in the second half of the season. So if I'm the Braves, I go Morton. Um, but I, neither one would surprise me, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I would go Morton as well. And as – been well documented he's not pitched well during the regular season but i just think he's a playoff dog it's been i don't know it's been like the last four or five years now it's in every year of charlie morton in the playoffs just pitching well it seems like so i trust charlie as well even though last start out was against the mets four and a third nine hits three earned runs off two home runs there five k's one walk five starts against the phillies and it's really hit or miss it's extremely hit or miss at the phillies at his last start Four and two-thirds, six earned runs off two home runs there. For that, six and two-thirds, no earned runs at home. At the Phillies, again, five innings, six hits, full five runs, four of them earned. And then at them again, five and two-thirds, seven hits, two earned runs there. So it's, it's dice. It's real dice for the Braves here. And it's someone that has Braves to win this series at plus 135, multiple Braves futures. I am a little concerned. I am a little concerned. I will admit it, but I do think they win this game. I do think that the better team shows out here. And let's talk about Aaron Nola, who's going for the Phillies. Everyone has known this for a while. And his last start was a beauty against the Cardinals, six and two thirds, four hits, no run run, six Ks, one walk there, and a big must win game for him. But I don't know. I have my doubts. Home road splits are about the same for. Mr. Nola, first home playoff game for the Phillies in ages now. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a long time. So the crowd's going to be revved up. But I do think at some points that could be a disadvantage for teams, especially when they get a little nervous, a little anxious, holding the bats a little tighter. His five starts against the Braves, a more hit and miss. You know, six innings, four hits, no run runs, eight Ks, no walks. Or sorry, eight Ks, three walks. And in a, in the, it was a back-to-back, so that was the second half of his back-to-back. His first half was seven innings, seven hits, four earned runs there, eight Ks, two walks. So I'm just not confident there. And then we go back another start, six innings, seven hits, five earned runs there off two home runs, 
And and those that start was at home too. The first good start in that back to back was at home as well. And a one more home start against them. Seven innings, seven hits, four in runs there, two home runs, eight Ks, one walks. We know what these teams are offensively at this point. And truthfully, I mean, obviously the lines aren't out yet as of recording, but I'm hoping for like a I don't know, like the, the Dodgers line, who which we'll talk about in a later video here. They're about minus 120. I'm hoping for the same price, hoping for the same price for the Atlanta Braves here, and maybe even cheaper. Maybe we'll even get a minus 10, minus 110 each way here. And if if Morton becomes the pitcher, I wouldn't be, be surprised to see them at plus money too. So I'm going to be on the Braves in some form or fashion here against the Philadelphia Phillies, Doc. Are you going to move on this game? Uh, yeah, I'm going to. I I'm going to be on the Braves as well. Uh, the, the Phillies had their fun in game one. They caught uh, freed freed was uh, very flat as he has been uh, previously in his career when he's been on long layoffs. So um, they caught him and they put up a few runs early, hung on to win. So I, um, I the Braves are just flat out a better team here. And, you know, wh- whether it's Morton or whether it's uh, Strider, I really don't think that it matters. Uh, you you talked about Nola in his last few starts. Um, Nola is a pretty diverse pitcher. Uh, doesn't have overpowering stuff. His fastball only tops out at 92.8. Uh, you can get it up in the 94 range, but he is a very crafty pitcher. He has five pitches that he throws. All of them he throws pretty well with pretty decent control. The uh, one put away pitch is the curveball, which he's got a 39.4% whiff rate for the year, 27.0% flat uh, put away rate. Teams are only hitting uh, uh, 219 against that for the season, and he has only allowed uh, just a handful of extra base hits against it. However, as of late, the Braves have actually been pretty good against breaking balls. So uh, I would expect here, I would expect that, uh, especially uh, with uh, no matter who pitches for Atlanta, um, I'm going to look hard here at the first five under, and I am going to look at Braves full game money line here. Yeah, and if if Strider does pitch, and, and you're 100% right about that bullpen, he's not pitched since the 18th of September. The Braves insist that he's ready to go full tilt, but I'll be interested to see if that Happens. I don't know about that one. Yeah, uh, I, I think at most, most he gives them five innings. I would be a little surprised if he went six, but he's obviously seen these Phillies before. Six innings, one hit, one earned run, 10 Ks, three walks. Was actually his last start against these Phillies, and he's faced them four times, three starts, one relief appearance, six innings pitched, one earned run in each of those appearances. So, Whichever pitcher I get here, give me the Braves. I was kind of spot on in the series so far. So the Phillies win game run, game one, and the Braves win the rest of the games in this series. So give me the Braves here for sure. And I am very excited for this game, to say the least. Yeah, yeah, I am too. And one more thing about Strider, if he does go, uh, Strider's actually thrown over 100 pitches in his last six starts, and he's only pitched out of the sixth inning one time. So that kind of goes back to what I was saying about he does throw a lot of pitches. He's not afraid to go to 2-0, 3-1 counts just because that slider is so wicked. He can very easily get back into it. He also has, as we know, an absolutely overpowering fastball, which he can get up near 100. So not afraid to throw that uh, slider way out of the zone. The other thing, too, is if it is Strider, Um, One thing to keep in mind from a strikeout perspective, I tweeted about it earlier this week, but um, Bill Miller is scheduled to be behind the plate and Bill Miller, he's the crew chief, but he is also one of the most, if not the most pitcher friendly umpires in all of baseball. He has one of the widest strike zones uh, next to, I believe, Mark Carlson. And he he is uh, his strikeout percentage is way above what most umpires are. His rating by by most sites that I trust is extreme pitchers slanted. Uh, he he almost always uh, hits over K props for starters, especially if they're at a reasonable number. So in the playoffs, all K props are typically dialed down. What you normally get is you get a few math factors involved, but normally you get uh, pitchers recent average minus one uh, because everything's tightened up a little bit. 
if that happens and if Strider is on the mound, um, I, I am going to probably just say it now. Give me the over all day with Spencer Strider and Bill Miller behind the plate. Uh, Bill Miller has actually been very, very friendly to us with overs this year. So if he's behind the plate and Spencer's on the mound, that's a combo that you want to be behind. Yeah, no, I, I wholeheartedly agree. It's going to be a whole lot of fun to see who goes, what they do. And I will I will be leaning towards an over in this game, too. I do think both these pitchers, if it's Morton, Nola, I kind of think they can both get hit. And I would expect the total to be up to like seven and a half, eight. And if it's Strider, Nola, I'll be interested to see if you can bet an over, thinking that Strider might struggle in his first start back. Uh, I would expect it to be like a seven to a six and a half with him. So it'll be... Very interesting to see how that goes. Doc, thank you as always for joining me. I appreciate you doing these small videos with me. Uh, we appreciate everyone watching these videos. Follow us on Twitter at Spin Doc Sports for Doc at Jose Bouquet for myself. Uh, and you can get all that sweet, sweet goodness that Doc's puts out on the Twitter machine. So uh, any any final things you have to you want to plug before we get out of here? Uh, no, just that uh, just that uh, uh, so far in the playoffs for strikeout props, uh, 10 and three so far. It's been a great postseason. Uh, I love postseason K props because there's not as many pitchers going. I can dig just ridiculously deep on stuff. Um, so, you know, I, I had a public play today, which cashed uh, probably going to have another one tomorrow. So uh, just I absolutely love playoff baseball strikeout props. Yep, so follow Spin Doc at Spin Doc Sports there. Doc, thanks so much. Stick around if you're watching these videos because we'll have part two. We've got Dodgers Padres, or maybe if you're watching Dodgers Padres first and you watch this one second, this is part two. So that's how <laughs> things work. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you guys on the other side.